Hello and welcome to DIY Dalton. Today we are going to try and fix my old MacBook Pro. So the problem is with my MacBook Pro is that if I was trying to run a large graphics control program like Photoshop, then everything seems to go a bit haywire. So let's have a look. Here we have my MacBook Pro. It is a um, 2011 model and with an i7 processor. So let's see if we can open up something that's going to take a lot of graphics to see if we're going to see the problem happen. It's loading. I'm actually going to open a few things just in case. And this is what will happen. As you can see, there are some very strange lines going across the screen. The screen has some sort of green hue to it. And this loading screen will appear, it will try to load, and the whole MacBook will restart again and again and again. And this can go on for about 10, maybe 20 times before it eventually starts up normally. Occasionally it will start up normally, but you still have that green hue to the screen. So, in order to fix this fault, we're gonna to need to take the main logic board out. So as you can see, <clears throat> it's still currently doing its restarting. It's done this about 30 times now and still hasn't actually started up. So we'll turn that off, power down and start opening up the back. Okay, so let's start with removing the back cover. There is, eight, nine, ten screws on the back here. See these, these small little Phillips screws. Have my trusty screwdriver. Let's take it apart. Okay, so those ten screws are out. These four screws at the back here, by the hinge, are a lot longer. As you can see the difference between these two screws. So bear that in mind when you're putting them back together. Let's take the cover off. Okay, so now we can see inside my very dusty MacBook Pro. We've got the hard drive, we've got the RAM, we've got the battery, we've got the logic disk, logic disk, optical disk, and we've got the logic board. So this is the part that we're going to want to take out and to fix our GPU problem. Okay, so first of all we need to obviously try and get this motherboard out. You shouldn't have to remove the battery. It is it does have a couple of screws, I have removed my screws, but um, it is just plugged in on this little plug here. Nothing else requires the battery to be removed. It actually says, do not remove the battery, but that is up to you. So I'm going to leave it in. I'm going to remove my hard drive because I don't want that damaged. Now, let's just check how we're going to do this. I believe it is just a couple of screws over here. And the hard drive pops off like that. It unplugs like that. And I want to keep that safe because that's all got all your data on. Okay, so next we have a few clips, all these holding the main board in. So start with all these ones around here. So you can get a little tweezers, you can get a little flat blade screwdriver, or just your fingernails. And lift them up. 
they want to be lifted up two times I must say about Apple products, they do, they are made very well, aren't they? They know what they're doing. Okay, let's time lapse this thing. Make it a bit, go a bit quicker. Here it goes. Okay, I believe most of the main harness is taken off. Oh, just noted there's another ribbon cable underneath here, so I'm just going to remove this little guard. Okay, so now I'm going to remove the ram. So let's just leave those two there. The first one pops out. Leave in the next one. That pops out too. Nice and easy. Okay, so now I'm going to remove the main screws for the board. Now you can see these are slightly different screws. These are the little Torx keys around there. There should be one, two, three, four, five, six holding the main board down. Okay, so let's go for it. Okay, so here's the Torx key. Let's remove those. Screws. One. So, here we have the logic board. Let's see if there's anything else we need to, to remove this thing out here. It's still fastened down somewhere. Yeah, missed a screw there. There we go. That's why you don't pull hard the first time. Oh, still stuck. What else are we missing? Okay, yeah, so I see there's another screw just underneath here. So. Uh, oh, could be this one here. Okay, so I found I did loosen those screws there, but I think there must be just a bit of a suction. So as you pull it up comes unstuck. So what it was was just the speaker here, the foam was a bit stuck to there. So see what I mean? There we go. So that is everything. So that is the board out. Let's have a look at it by itself. Now to fix this fault, we're going to be putting this board in the oven. So we want to make sure that there's nothing else on there that's going to get damaged by the heat. So we're going to be able to see if we can take off all these little extra pieces here. So all this um, heat sink and the speaker, as well as this little piece here, all ready to go in the oven. Okay. So everything seems off, just a lot of dust. So I'm going to have to blow this off first, either using an air compressor or if you've got some big lungs, start your blowing. So this here is the culprit. So this is the AMD GPU, which is the problem, uh, the source of all our problems. So normally what it ha it, it, the problem is, is that some of the solder underneath has cracked all dried, giving us those lines. So we're going to clean up all this thermal paste around here, and then we're going to shove it in the oven. Okay. 
So what we're going to do now, we've preheated the oven to 180 degrees or gas mark 4 if you're like me and we're now going to place the board in. Put on a nice piece of foil, place it neatly. Like that. And we're going to put a timer on for seven minutes. Alexa, put a timer on for seven minutes. Alexa, stop. Okay, so now turn the oven off. Let's take it out, put it on the side to cool down. Wait, wow, that looks extra tasty. I'm gonna have that with some chips. Well, let's wait for it to cool down and then we can see if this works. So, now that our logic board is baked to a nice, crispy, even golden color, we can now place it all back in. So, we will have to replace all the thermal paste on these four components there, which I'll have it over here. So we'll do that and then we'll screw everything back in. So, well, let's not waste any time. Let's go for it. Okay, so now that everything is back together, got the speaker on, put all these little heat sinks on, which looks good. We need to place it back inside here. Now, things to note is that you've got this little cable here, which I believe could be wrong, is the backlight for your keyboard. All these little connectors here. So if you can, try and keep these out of the way. It's quite difficult. Um, so what we need to do then is we need to slot these connectors into this area here and then very carefully try and get this three pin connector into here okay not overly easy there's not a lot of space below there but let's see what we can do okay so I want to get the mag this display cable out the way with the mag safe into its location as much as I can Tilt this at an angle. Now let's go for that special connector. I'm going to use another little light here just so I can see what I'm doing. It is not easy. Okay, I think it's in. So now while it's in, I carefully need to get all these other cables out of the way without lifting this one up too much. Um, down. Okay, let's try. There we go, that's out of the way, that's out of the way. There's one here, I think. Let's try. Oh, come on. That one there. Perfect. So this cable, this cable, this cable, this cable, there's a cable under there. Perfect. Now that hopefully it should all line up and line all those screws up. So let's get these base screws in. I 
do recommend you put this back together soon after you've taken apart because I didn't and I forgot to where both these screws go. Okay, so that's that. Let's move that out of the way. Let's go for these fans. Should be three screws on each fan. Now I've managed to lose one of my screws just because I didn't pack it away nicely last time, so my own fault. So hopefully I'll find it before I put it back together. If not, I'm going to be one screw down. So it doesn't matter too much. Okay, so now we can start plugging in all these little plugs. Just put our RAM back in. Okay, hard drive. Okay, everything is looking good. Everything seems in place. No one needs inside. Pretty much, we just need to put this back panel on. And then, we can give it a test. Okay, I've had the final scour for that missing um, screw, and I can't find it. But, luckily, it's right underneath this cover when I do find it. So, let's put our screws in. We've got one. three long screws and the rest are short so let's get these in one two three find these screws on the edges here weird because you expect to go straight down but it's actually at a slight angle Would you believe we are done and we have done it ourselves? Let's see if it turns on. The moment of truth is it going to turn on and is it going to run those high graphics programs? like ZBrush or Blender or so forth. So let's see, well, so far, so good. Let's see background. Okay, so all that's good. I just started some heavy programs. So I've got ZBrush going there, converter program. I can hear the fans kicking in. So it's definitely 
warming up. What else did we open it last time? Let's have a look. I mainly if I can open ZBrush, I'd be happy because I haven't done it. Oh, I haven't done this for so long. Look, it works. I have, we have together fixed our MacBook Pro and we did it ourselves. And that is the main thing. Let's see if we can get another program up and running. Let's put this thing to its max, making sure it's not going to conk out when I stop the video. One last, oh, come on, we're open last time now, can I? Well, let's get some Warcraft 3 in there. A little bit of Warcraft 3. Oh! I think that is a success. So, that is a success. We have managed to fix our MacBook Pro, taken it apart, take the logic board, shove it in the oven for about seven minutes. It's come out nice and crispy and everything seems to be working. So I know this may not be a permanent fix, but for now, I've got my old MacBook back that I can just run some old software, use it for my 3D printer or something like that. And yeah, that's brilliant. So any comments down below, anything you would have done differently, if you wouldn't have done it at all, um, if you guys can do it and it works, let me know, subscribe, like, have a good day and do things yourself.